non ti devi importare di quello che arriva, arriva, arriva quello che arriva va bene. Purely artistic, it's done something just for the sake of it and uh, it's something that's done beautifully. Sono pronto a prendere esattamente quello che mi danno perché secondo me sarà una cosa che mi piace assolutamente. A minute and you have a whole group of people uh, around your bicycle. People that know, know. I, I was convinced I would like it. I really was convinced I would like it. <laughs> e la bicicletta per me è, non è per un altro. Voglio un chiave del punto. E lì, e, e lì devi tu trovare l'ispirazione di, di, di come, di come chiavarlo. <laughs> I knew that Jacob liked riding, and uh, I know he liked bicycles. And uh, so one day I, I, I called him and said, you know, there's somebody here very close to the gallery that has opened, you know, a shop. And it's somebody who builds bicycles. And Jacob said, really? And who is he? And I said, Pegoretti. And it was funny because Jacob, after a fraction of a second, said, Pegoretti? Really? So I talked to Helen DeFranchis and asked her, I said, you know, can you go back and ask Dario if he'll build me a bike? <laughs> and so she went back and, you know, walked down and had a coffee with him and told, her, told him that one of his artists wanted to get a bicycle built. He was like, He needs to come here to get measured, and then he needs to come back and paint the bicycle himself, which I thought was such a crazy thing to do, and um, that it, uh, I thought, why not, you know? Circa 2007, così, uh, arrivavano degli ordini dagli Stati Uniti, e molti ordini erano Dario Choice, Dario Choice. Dario Choice, Dario Choice e Dario a un certo punto si era rotto le balle e dice che cazzo femo qua, cazzo femo qua, ma che se ciao fa quel cazzo che mi pare, capito? Ed ecco qua che è uscita la parola che se ciava, capito? E come si chiama sta grafica? Ciavete, capito? E, e quindi è partita così. We talked about bicycle frames, we talked about music, and in a few minutes we found out that his interest is in the music, and we are producing speaker, and my interest is in, in into frames, and he was producing the frame. So we had a connection after only a few minutes. I think when you look to a technical product, you need to be a frame builder, you need to be a speaker builder, but you, uh, you can see if the, you can see the quality of the product when you look to the details. And that's exactly what I experienced with this kind of uh, pecorari frames. Meno persone lavorano per costruire un oggetto, più valore ha. Ed è una cosa fantastica perché è uno solo che fa un progetto, che fa un telaio anche, e lo fa solo lui, acquisisce un valore molto più alto rispetto alla catena di montaggio dove ne fanno l'oggetto, come diceva. Dumas di Hermès, l'oggetto di lusso è quello che dura nel tempo e si può riparare. Questa è la definizione che io uso anche nel mio lavoro e che la Pegoretti usa come sistema, perché la bicicletta Pegoretti dura nel tempo tantissimo. Non è una, una, ha un materiale e una tecnologia di costruzione che non, non invecchia mai. Quello che vogliamo è che questo chiave debba avanti e che vada avanti sempre in continuazione e in continuo cambiamento. Per esempio in questo periodo stiamo facendo questa collaborazione con Giacomo Ascimodo che ci ha donato un telaio dove dentro quel telaio ci sono mille ispirazioni. All the artists are inspired by somebody um, by an artist who produced work earlier, you know, I mean a lot of artists have been uh, inspired by all the big ones, you know, Picasso, Andy Warhol, or whatever. Everybody is influenced by somebody. But then, from that, they actually make their own style. I think that as we mature into our own kind of language, and our own kind of vision of the world, inspiration becomes something more that you cultivate. It's something that you have to go out and search for. It's something that 
um, requires you to look at the world and find things that are interesting, find things that you want to explore, find ideas and people that you want to engage with. And those kinds of things fuel a certain kind of inspiration. It allows you to keep making artwork, to keep writing, to keep making films, to keep doing whatever it is that you do. It's one thing to put a painting on a wall, and it's another to put a painting on a bicycle. And how does that change the language? And that's kind of an inspiring thought because it actually, inspiring in a certain way, it's a curious thought because it makes you recontextualize what you already think you know. And that's something that you should, I think, always be doing. My Chavete is called Klimt Sportivo. And the way how this came up was in the, within the conversation. He said, look, Gustav Klimt inspired uh, the colors, the gold, and the playfulness in the art. And then I said to them, but I want it sportive. And then Christina said, ah, you want the Klimt Sportivo, and that's how it came. <laughs> you can ask me many things about wine. I can give you, like, there I can give you answers, but there uh, on the Chavete, I, you give up control, and I'm fine with that. Why would you micromanage an artist? So we have the earth at the bottom moving up, and, you know, through this kind of graphic urban landscape into um, into the night sky up the seat tube into this kind of cloudscape at the top. The notion of it being, from my standpoint, was it was a single kind of conceptual gesture. That like if you got one part of it, like this bike is a landscape, you know, if that's, and that's the gesture, then that from a distance is enough of a, that it, it's effective enough at doing what it's trying to do. That's what you got. You got. I just saw a landscape fly by me. You know, that's that's great. And it achieved what it was supposed to do graphically. Chavet is, is a constantly changing animal, and it changed throughout Dario's life, and it's going to continue to change. And I think, you know, its relationship to the brand, I think, is that is that it doesn't sit back and kind of become a fossil. It just keeps kind of growing in different ways and cutting off other limbs and moving on, mutating. There are lots of great bike frames, you know, but I think that this idea of being willing to break rules and, and to innovate in ways that Chavate does is what makes it a little bit more interesting. And I think that that's gonna be the challenge moving forward is keeping that um, embedded in it, but I don't think it's something that only Dario could do. It was cool, you know, if you have a bike that he painted, it's pretty cool, <laughs> you know, like, you know, but it's not to say that there aren't really great, you know, frames being painted at that shop right now. But it's more of a sensibility than, a, than anything. It's an attitude towards making and towards um, codification and towards institutionalization in terms of um, stagnation, you know, it's like this kind of constantly moving target. Andrà in continua evoluzione. Uh, io credo che, che il Chavet prenderà sempre più potere dentro questa officina perché è, è, è quello che abbiamo sempre coltivato negli ultimi dieci anni e lo vogliamo sempre portare avanti. Quindi vedo che, vedo che piace ai nostri clienti e piace anche a noi farlo perché poi, dopo alla fine, quando è, è vero che stiamo lì una settimana a discutere e come mettere insieme i colori di, 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 e l'ispirazione del cliente che ci ha ordinato questo Chavet. Ma quando poi dopo uh, vediamo le espressioni della persona che viene a ritirarlo, oppure le email che ti arrivano di, 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 di calorose, di ringraziamento del, del pacco che gli è arrivato in aperto, sono rimasti entusiasti, questa cosa fa felice. Quindi credo che eh, il futuro del Chavede è quello di andare avanti, insomma, per forza.